1793, following months of growing tension, war finally broke out between Great Britain and France, following the first shot in what would be a long naval war that lasted with a short break until 1815. The Royal Navy's small ships were soon embarked on an almost unbroken run of single ship victories. The first prize was the suitably named privateer, Sans Culotte, celebrating the revolutionary mob that surrounded the execution of many a hated Aristo, taken on the 13th of March by the brig Scourge after a fierce three hour struggle. This presentation records the playing of this first small ship action of the war, using the rules Kiss Me Hardy from the Two Fat Lardies, and with additional rules from To Covet Glory, written by Chris Stoerson and designed to better enable battles between small ships under the rate. HMS Scourge was a 16-gun brig sloop commanded by Captain George Brissack with a normal complement of 90 men. However, on the day of the action, she was 20 men under strength and her 16 six-pounder guns were reduced to just eight guns, giving her a broadside of 24 pounds. I've tried to represent the Scourge based on her performance on the day and thus have rated her crew as elite Jolly Jack Tars with all the corresponding added abilities shown. Note also the changes to the ship's stat sheet in terms of hull damage points and gunnery dice introduced in the add-on rules to covet glory. The French privateer brig Le Sans Culottes mounted 12 guns and carried a crew of 81 men. She had a powerful armament for her size of eight 8-pounder eight long guns and four 12-pounder abusiers or the French style carronade. With her 60-pound broadside she could outgun the scourge at close range and her three hour long resistance easily rated her as Jolly Jack Tars to represent her privateer status and enthusiasm for taking prizes. However, her crew would have suffered under the disruption caused by the revolution and is thus rated as poor. Her commander is not recorded. Hence, for our action, I have chosen a famous Lardy character to stand in for this obviously able French privateer commander. Once two ships made contact, the process of identifying friend from foe had to be conducted, with advantages to be gained by the first to confirm the identity of the other, allowing the decision to be made to either fight or flee. The decision by either side to flee and its impact on the victory assessment to be made is covered by the campaign rules Narrow Seas by Cursed Captain. Although some small actions are well documented with precise details of sea conditions, positions and courses taken, many others are not and so Narrow Seas provides a useful framework to build a setup for those actions less well documented, plus the odd rule to cover the effects of surprise. Sadly, the action between the Scourge and the Sans Culottes is one of those that is covered in less detail than one would want, and so Narrow Seas provided the setup positions and wind direction, with neither side benefiting from any advantage over the other. The chip draw method of activation in Kiss Me Hardy is an ideal way of determining when specific actions in the move will occur, and with commanders of the ships choosing orders for the turn ahead, that is, whether to turn to port, starboard, move ahead or tack, the need to write orders is mitigated and attempts to identify the enemy made during the move phase for that side determines who spots who and when. As the two ships closed, making attempts to identify each other 
they both cautiously turned with the wind to bring their broadsides to bear, and it was the scourge that successfully identified the sans culotte as an enemy and ordered her guns run out. The scourge continued to turn, bringing her portside battery to bear and ran up her challenge signal and colours as her opponent turned onto a parallel course. After a short pause to allow her opponent to respond, Brissac gave the order to fire and several hits were observed on the sans culottes as her French colours were run up sharply in reply. At over 600 yards, the range was long, and Brissac could congratulate himself for bringing his gun crews up to speed and accuracy, able to hit home with his small broadside. As both ships held their course, the range inevitably shortened, and the scourge, by bearing away two points and staying slightly ahead, got in another broadside as the sans culotte held its fire, hoping to maximise the effects of the 12-pounder carronades at close range. Still both captains held their course, and the range dropped to close, with both crews hoping to cause irrevocable damage. The scourge double-shotted, and the sans culottes with its carronade back 60 pound broadside. Both ships reeled under the close range exchange of fire, with Scourge's wheel shot away and its helm's crew killed and severely wounded. The sans culotte put hard about and put her bow around that of the scourge to continue the close in exchange of fire. Sensing the cannonade favoured the French ship's guns, Brissac ordered grapples to be thrown and to prepare to board. A cheer went up on the scourge as grappling hooks took hold and Brissac led his boarders over the bulwarks to the Frenchman's poop, gaining a foothold ready to clear the enemy deck. The privateer loosed a final broadside at the British brig, attempting to take down follow-up boarders, but the scourge was irresistible and the French crew retired below through the bow deck hatch in retreat. Both ships bore the scars of their close range exchanges but the French ship still needed to be secured and the next few minutes would likely decide this first naval action of the war. With the gun deck of the sans culotte cleared and the smoke of battle drifting away, the privateers lost heart for further resistance. Lieutenant Visage de Vache presented himself on the deck to offer his sword as the Frenchman's colours were struck. The almost equal damage caused to both ships' hulls 
17 on the Sans Colottes and 18 hits on the Scourge shows how close a battle this was. But with Scourge's guns lying wrecked by the privateer's firepower and with Sans Colottes long guns intact, Brissac was well advised to take the fight onto the Frenchman's deck where his elite crew were able to turn the battle in his favour. This game was run thanks to the wonders of modern technology. As you can see, by the use of a video support platform, in this case Zoom, together with a couple of cameras, small naval actions with a few ships are very easily run. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and if you'd like to know more about the game, the rules and the models used then can I suggest popping along to jjwargamesblogspot.com